Good day ladies and gents, welcome to our next worked example as part of Stellenbosch University Structural Fire Engineering Postgraduate course. We are in the Steel and Fire section and this is our third worked example where today we're going to be looking at beams in fire. So running through the calculations for how do we calculate the capacity of a steel beam in bending. So just to go through the question, for the grade S355JR beam shown below, calculate. A, if the beam is sufficient for a permanent load of 25 kilonewtons and an imposed load of 15 kilonewton being applied by each column, if the temperature of the beam is 500 degrees Celsius, and B, determine the maximum temperature of the beam for the applied load. So there is a cross-section through the beam. Make sure you have the set of notes that go uh, with this uh, example so you have the full example and the the question and the specifications below so there we've got a beam it's spanning six meters and then along the way we've got two columns columns symmetrically placed so they applying a force there and a force there and there is lateral support at the bottom and top of that beam meaning that the beam cannot buckle sideways there and there there is some sort of restraint preventing horizontal movement so when it comes to buckling that is a huge influence on our capacity now if you're familiar with steel design you'll realize that if you've got an angle cleat connection on the side this means it's a pinned connection because the flanges of the beam carry all the load so i'm just going to draw a cross section through the beam what it would look like we've got our, our beam and if you connect the flanges the load then the moment can be carried but if you only can um, connect the web of the section then it will just rotate at the support so no moment will be transferred so we've got a simply supported beam here and now when it comes to the section we've I've listed all the different properties of the beam the UB2541 4631 beam and uh, the first thing we need to do is calculate the bending moment diagram through I've already put a diagram down below and uh, I'm going to calculate the maximum moment in the beam and get that for the section but I'm going to just call it MF so you realize this is a fire moment just to to clarify that now firstly when it comes to the structural analysis of the section as I mentioned earlier we have a simply supported section so our beam would look like that we have point loads on top and we need to then calculate the forces in the section and what you'll find because it's symmetrical the reactions end up matching the forces uh, simply from symmetry and so the bending moment at the positions below the point loads are actually very easy to calculate it's simply the reaction force times this distance and so we will now do those calcs so let's start going through and then putting together firstly what is our uh, load what is our response and then we can calculate our resistance so at the fire limit state at the fire limit state we calculate now what is our applied load but for we have our force that is applied at in the fire is our dead load GK plus our imposed load I'm going to use a 0.5 factor a 0.5 partial factor for the imposed load you will see that this varies between different codes and you could justify a number of different values I'm picking the 0.5 value so that's saying the worst load in 50 years is at about one and we're assuming that when the fire breaks out you're not going to have the worst load in 50 years at the same time as the fire occurs so you actually reduce your imposed load but when putting this in it means I've got my 25 kilonewton imposed load plus my 15 kilonewton uh, permanent I mean impo 25 permanent 15 imposed I reduce my imposed and I get to a calculated point load at those two positions so that is my force being applied at those two positions and I'm going to apply them specifically at the fire limit state so there is my force now let's get through to then maximum moment maximum moment is as I was saying it was simply the reaction force 
times by some distance, and that was then the lever arm of 2 meters, which equals then 32.5 kilonewtons times 2 meters. So that gives us our calculated bending moment diagram. There are tables and different guidelines, so you can work out these bending moments for all sorts of different cases fairly easily. The uh, red book by the Steel Institute is excellent for that, but as I said, there are various other resources. So now we know what our maximum value is, and you'll need to go brush up on some second year or first year mechanics if, you're, if your bending moment diagrams are a bit rusty. But there it is. It's a triangular shape each side and then a constant value in the middle because it's a symmetric section with two equal point loads. Now once we've got that we can start getting through the calculation of the capacity. We are told it's at 500 degrees Celsius and this would normally be calculated by some sort of heat transfer calculation and uh, 500 degrees is a very nice round number to make our calcs easy but uh, it's unlikely it'd work out as easily as that or as rounded as that. For that temperature our reduction factor for yield is 0.78 and the reduction factor for our Young's modulus is 0.6 meaning that we have our updated um, value. So our yield strength at some temperature T is simply our ambient temperature times by this reduction factor. Uh, and the same thing, our Young's modulus is our value times these. Okay, We will now use those in the equations that follow. And there are a variety of calcs that I need to, to carry out. Sorry, just to finish this off, so I haven't written it down. So this is 276.9 MPA. Our steel is 120 GPA. And we also need G, which is the shear modulus. And we, the shear modulus we're going to take as being the same as the Young's modulus, um, the, the same factor. It's the same uh, property. It's the shear stiffness. So there we go. So there is all our properties. And if in doubt where this has come from. So this is with our yield strength being 355 and our Young's modulus being 200. Just in case, that is the properties of a 355JR steel. Now I'm going to move on to the calculation of the flexural capacity. So there are properties. The properties are going to now get put into the calculations for our section. So here is the equation to calculate the flexural resistance. And we do this according to our moment of resistance equals the equation shown there. And this is from the Canadian guidelines. We're going to need to now go through and calculate the various parameters needed, such as CK, our plastic section, then uh, our MCR, our critical moment of resistance, and the various other factors needing, and also our CZ there. Much of this equation is empirical, so it's quite difficult just to look at it and identify exactly what is um, happening in this. But this is linked to ambient temperature calc, so I'm just going to diverge quickly just to show you at um, ambient temperature what happens. Normally what we have is a, if this is uh, our length on the one axis and this is our moment of resistance, if it's a very short column, the material will hit yielding and this will be an M P value it'll hit there. If it's a longer column, it'll experience elastic buckling, and this will be an MCR value. But a real column is not quite perfect, and there will always be some material properties that are not exactly as specified. So our real column is, I mean, our real beam is as shown by the green line. So that is our M. R value and that is a function of both MP and MCR. So that 
is at ambient temperature and then what happens this ambient temperature graph starts dropping as the steel heats up so then it, it ends up being one of these dotted lines um, as we get further down but that's just as a side to try illustrate this but the equations above have been sort of fitted to these types of, of graphs that describe the behavior. Now we need to populate that equation above so I'm just going to fill in all those values. Our CK is 0.12, it's an empirical value. Our MP, so this is the plastic section of a beam. So that's if you bent a beam until it failed it would reach this capacity and it's our ZPL, our, our um, plastic modulus, times by a yield strength and uh, and there we go so this ends up if we convert the units to 109.4 kilonewton meters and so that as a, once again that's if you bent the section it would end up achieving that if no buckling occurred we now also need another empirical factor CZT and this is the temperature plus 800 divided by 500 which has to be less than or equal to 2.4 there's an upper limit on it and we'll find in our case it actually exceeds that so it'll uh, be set to the 2.4 value and continuing on which equals 2.6 oops that doesn't work therefore C Z at temperature T is 2.4. Now we need to start calculating our MCR, which is our critical elastic section. So if we bent a perfect beam, that would be the moment it suddenly buckles at. Kind of like Euler buckling for columns, you get MCR for beams. And to run through that, we first need something called kappa. And this is the ratio of the minimum moment to the maximum moment and it is negative for single curvature and positive for double curvature and I will go to the diagram above to explain this so coming back to our bending moment diagram which is there when you design a section in bending you always design between the points of lateral support and we've got lateral support at the column, lateral support at the loaded columns and then lateral support the other side so what we are doing we are designing this section here this two meters of beam when it when it buckles and so we need the bending moment diagram each side so if it's there and there we take the ratio of the magnitude of the minimum divided by the ratio of the magnitude of the maximum and here they're actually equal but there are many cases where they're not equal and then you'd have to to get a value from those and um, also one thing if you ever have a value exceeding let's say our diagram looked like that and that actually there was a maximum not at the end then just omega 2 is 1 uh, you'll we're about to calculate the omega 2 now but first we calculate kappa and then from kappa do we get to an omega 2 value so this just accounts for the shape of the bending moment diagram so the shape of the bending moment diagram influences buckling behavior so we're going to be designing this two meter stretch and also those lateral supports as I was saying influence buckling so when this buckles if I looked in plan when this beam failed it would kind of buckle like this this green line so the top flange, the compression flange would buckle sideways, it cannot buckle sideways, we have points of lateral support so this is a top view and that's more or less what we would get if we were to, to see this as it fails so coming back to our equations um, so you can keep uh, fill this, filling these in there is our kappa value and so this is minus 65 over 65 and so this simply equals minus 1. We plug that in into omega 2 and omega 2 counts for the shape of the bending moment diagram. It's another empirical factor to adjust um, for that shape. Kappa squared and this must always be less than two and a half and uh, so in this case going to finish off the calcs. By inspection if you've done these calcs before you'll know if you've got a constant bending moment diagram the answer will be 1.
which is exactly as it as it works out here. Now continue on. The next input value we need is our effective length L, and that's two meters. And then we're now going to calculate the critical moment of resistance. I'm going to just quickly write it out here as it's a very long equation. So there is our equation for the critical moment of resistance or the buckling moment. Uh, it's a very long equation, uh, very easy to make a mistake with, especially when you're doing hand calculations. But basically it accounts for both saint um torsion and warping torsion and uh, calculates a resistance of the beam from that. So once again, this is a perfect beam where it suddenly buckles as the moment is reached. So now I'm going to fill in all the values for those and then take the... the uh, calculate the final MC. So there is the equation filled in, so that puts in all the different input values to get to our MCR. And one thing you'll see, I've been quite careful in terms of leaving everything in newtons and millimeters for units. You can use any units as long as you're consistent. And I generally just find newtons and millimeters easier and more consistent to work with. And then once you finally get through all of that, you end up with some very long numbers that you've got to add up together. Once again, this is a contribution of warping and synphonon torsion for those who are interested. And uh, now you do end up, it is normal to end up with you know, 10 to the power of 20s and 21s and such. Times 10 to the power of 21 as well. And if you now finally work all that out and then convert your final answer, you get to 177.0 kilonewton meters. So that is our elastic um, critical moment of resistance. We now have everything we need to calculate the resistance of our section. So let's go back to that. And now we are looking for our MR, moment of resistance, at some temperature T. And this is given by all those values we listed above, or we've calculated above, plugged into our equation. So here is the moment of resistance equation that's been filled in with all the values and uh, plug those all through and eventually you'll find out we get to a moment of resistance of 58 kilonewton meters. And at this stage now we need to calculate or compare our moment of resistance against the actual moment in the beam. And what we find is that it is less than the fire limit state moment which we calculated above of 65 kilonewtons. Therefore, this actually fails. At this stage, either we would need a bigger beam or more uh, protection, lower load, something like that. We would have to actually run through this calc again until we get the, the calculations to work out. So, let's say we needed to now find out at what temperature would this structure survive what we would do is take the calculations above and adjust t until uh, our moment of resistance at time t at temperature t is greater than our fire limit state moment and this gives a maximum temperature temperature of 449 degrees Celsius. So you can go double check those calcs yourself, but you would find that it would just survive 500 degrees Celsius. It was too weak, but 449, once it um, was down to that stage, it would survive. So a little bit of passive protection would be needed then to, to do that or some, some sort of shielding um, to our section. Okay, so that takes us through this next worked example. So to go back to our start and where our beam was, we had a cross section. We had a beam spanning six meters, but it was uh, two meters between effective uh, between points of lateral support. And so we got our bending moment diagram of about 65 kilonewton meters at the fire limit state, and then calculated the resistance of this beam, found it to be insufficient. And then saw that if we dropped the temperature to 449 in some way or another, it would work. Otherwise, we would need a, a bigger beam for this to work out. Thank you very much.